Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Access. In this module, I want to show you how you can create a simple HR database. So I'm on the new tab here, new option. I've just clicked on that. Blank database is what I want. I'm clicking on that and it, it asks me to name the database. So I'll just call this database HR and then create. And it will give me a blank database with a table open already for me to fill in. Now, normally I don't use this feature here. I'm gonna close that because what I like to do is create my own tables from the create option at the top there and the ribbon in table design. By going into table design, you can actually set all the properties and fields that you need and put any comments that you might want to put in there. So that's the way I would recommend you do it. Although the other way is not wrong. So first of all, we've got table design. You've got three columns, field name, data type, description. And down the bottom here, you've got some properties, field properties, it says there. So if I just give myself a, let's do a staff table. So let's have a staff table and then we can build it up from that. So this is just going to be the people, first of all. So I want um, the first field to be staff ID. Now, normally a staff ID is an allocated number, but you can set this to be whatever type you want, data type. If you set this to auto number, it will automatically increment every time you add a new member of staff. So I think that's what I'm gonna do for this example. So then we'll go for first name, and then coming down, we'll do surname, and each time it's defaulting, you can see there to short text, which is fine. That's um, up to 255 characters. So if I click onto that, you can see in the properties down there, it says 255 characters. I'll go through some of these format options in a bit, but first name, surname. Now let's go for address. Address. Now it's, you've got to be careful um, when you're doing address because um, some people like to do the street name, address one, address two, address three, and things like that. I find that confusing. So I'm just going to go for address, city, and postcode. Now you could, if you wanted to do, put country in there. All of these are short text. Now what you should do, and I never mentioned it already, is don't leave that on 255 for a surname or a first name, or any of these really. Maybe address, you might want to, because Access allocates that many spaces regardless of whether you use them or not so i'm going for 25 for a first name and i still don't know anybody with that and 50 just to be on the safe side for surname address i might go for 100 and city definitely not 255 characters so i'm just going to drop that down to 50 as well postcode in the uk it's less than 10 now, what you've got to be careful of is you don't go too small because then you'll truncate the actual data when you type it in. Now, I want date joined of the company. Now, date joined is going to be a date time field. So I'll just type the letter D and it drops it onto date time. Now, on a date time field, you can actually format this or give it an input mask even. Now, before I can do an input mask to force people to type in a certain way, I'm going to have to save this table. So I'll call it... TBL is a qualifier for tables, staff details, like that. That's what it's going to be called, TBL staff details. It says no primary key. It's going to select no for now, otherwise it'll allocate me one. What it means by a primary key is, um, I don't know why I've got a blank field there. I didn't notice that, so I'll just get rid of that. It means it cannot be duplicated. So staff ID, primary key, get a little key symbol can't be duplicated, can't have two numbers the same. Now, date joined, input mask, three little ellipses at the end there, I'm gonna click on that. Opens up a little wizard, asking me to save the table again because I made a change. And short date is the format I want, so people can only type in like that. And I'm just gonna finish that, and it'll put a series of zeros in there. If they were nines, it, mean it, it would mean it's optional. So you can format every date field and I recommend you do that. What you put in the description column at the top here is up to you. But there's nothing there that isn't obvious. If there's any of these fields that wasn't obvious, you need to qualify it with a description 
in there. Now, down at the bottom for each of these fields, you have a series of properties and you can see the date field has less properties than the text field. But no, no, no bother. You can still utilize these. So you've got like a de default value. So let's say most people that we deal with live in Sunderland. So if I type Sunderland uh, there, it means that any, every time you create a new record, the word Sunderland will already be there. You've got validation rule and text, so you can do a rule. So the date joined, um, for example, if you had a date of birth in here, let's do that one. Um, DOB, I'll put a date time. And again, I'll format that. So I'll have to save the table and do an input mask on that. So that's going to be same thing. Three little ellipses. Click on short date. Finish. So now I'll save that again. So I'm saving things as I'm going along here. So a default setting for that is probably not worth doing that. Date of birth, you're going to be told that when people join. But down here, validation rule, you could set um, date of birth has to be less than today. There is a table property where you could say date join has to be greater than the date of birth. But let's just do this validation rule here. So um, the validation rule for the date of birth has to be less than today. So the form form I'm going to do is now with an open and close bracket. So it's got to be less than now. And then the rule um, that you want to check, the text that you want to appear is this, enter a date before today. That's what's going to pop up. Now this one that says required is a bit of a dodgy one. If you have that to yes, it means you have to put the information in whether you've got it or not. So you've got to be careful with that. You can't put everything to yes. You might want it, but you might not be able to get the data. So be careful with that one. Indexed, however, you can index every field if you want. If I click on that primary key, that is already indexed, uh, no duplicates. But any other field can also be indexed, just speeds up searches. So some of these are the fields at the bottom there are to do with foreign languages. So I'm not going to go through those just yet. Now, another rule that I could put in this is a property sheet rule, which will apply to the table where I can combine these. So over here, you've got the same sort of information rule, but I'm going to go into the ellipses now to get into the expression builder because I'm going to say date joined must be after date of birth. Can't join before you've been born. So that is the rule. That'll stop typos as well. Enter a date after the DOB date. That is what's going to pop up there. Save that. And then while you're designing your database, you can come in and out of this design view and tweak things before you go live. You'll have to get a set of data as well and play around with it and make sure it's doing what you want. But for now, let's have a quick look at the table. If I click on staff details um, and then view, it shows me the fields. You can see the fields, that's what we've just created. And if I just put one person in there, so it creates, I put myself in there, pressing tab, Steve Saxton, pressing tab, one red road, always leave, uh, live there. No. Sunderland's already there for it for for me, but if I don't live in Sunderland, so if I tab across and say I live in Leeds, that's okay. You can just over type it, and then that's LS one one RD date joined. I put today. I just did the key command there. Control semicolon. Date of birth. So this is a test here. So twenty one zero eight nineteen fifty seven. I oh, know I don't sound that old, but I am. Press tab. Everything's happy. It let me do it. It numbered it. It didn't break the rule. So that's great. Um, that's what you've got to keep checking. So that's your first table created. Now it's a case of getting some test data in there and building it up. So this is HR. So I'm going to do a table later on in a different video for training and for sickness and stuff like that. All the things that pertain to HR. So you can see how it all fits together. But for now, that's all I want to talk about. So hopefully this little video has got you going 
and I'll catch you on the next one.